Welcome to DNR Auto Machining. We might not be the best, but we'll do our best. Armed with nothing but some YouTube knowledge, the willingness to do it, and the desire to stop sitting on the couch and finally go racing, today, we're gonna build an engine. Everything is in there. The, the, the pistons are all marked. Nice. Yeah, what all they came yeah, out of. Because I've got brand new bearings. Yeah, there you go. So it's already. Yeah, we made it pull apart like two years ago. And <laughs> just let it sit. He's like, oh yeah, yeah, well, one day, one day, one day. And then, you know how that goes sometimes. Yep. Now, I know, I know what you're thinking. Matt, it's been a while. Well, it has. We've been working on all kinds of stuff. Working? I ain't seen a YouTube video in forever. Yeah, well, because as it turns out to make YouTube life possible and happen, we gotta work on other things besides just making videos. But I've got a lot of good news to share with you. Cool stuff going on. And a crank bolt that won't come out. That's okay, we got the answer for that. The key is to do it without tipping the whole thing over. Come on, come on baby. I got a smoking deal. This is an aluminum Gen 3.5 L33, whatever you want to call it, but aluminum block 5.3 with Gen 4 rods, flat top pistons. Also grabbed a set of 243 heads, which is better known as LS1 heads. So this is gonna be a stout little combination once I can get it apart. Why am I taking it apart, you might ask? We're doing it all. Cam bearings, main bearings, rod bearings, Probably not gonna touch the rings because there's nice cross hatching in there and the pistons were all marked where they go. But throw the Texas Speed Cam in there, destroy a converter, you know, just normal shit for a Tuesday. Once I can get this bolt off. You need me to stand on that back corner there? Yeah, you stand on the back corner there so I can apply first. Stand right here. Don't tip me over now. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> we're going down. <laughs> we're going down. Uh, oh, let's get another, get another good one on there. I'm just there. long for the ride here. Oh, there she goes. Yeah, it's coming out. Got one. So I know you've been thinking, well, <clears throat> what have you been doing? We've been making deals. Everything must go. I'm just kidding, we ain't sold nothing. We've got some exciting new partnerships. We've got Texas Speed has jumped on board for the 2023 season. Huge news, gonna be awesome. We've also got Fluid Amper jumping on board for the 2023 season, which is gonna be epic for us. We've also got some other announcements that we can't quite make yet, but there's gonna be us doing quite a bit of traveling, sponsoring races, being involved at a bunch of events, both stuff we're used to like no prep and some stuff that we haven't taken you guys along for the ride yet like diesel racing but we'll get more into that later it's getting close you can feel it there it is now i know what you're gonna say next matt why in the world would you buy another junkyard engine when you've got one at the machine shop well let me address those questions real quick Junkyard 6.0, they had the spun bearing. Still at the machine shop. Still hasn't made it to the hot tank yet. They haven't even gotten through step one. Big block at an engine builder. Still getting worked on, still getting put together. That leaves us with 
a whole lot of nothing if we plan on going racing anytime soon. Based on the look of these cam bearings, which I scratched up and nicked up pulling the cam out, they don't seem to be down to the copper yet, which means probably a pretty low mileage engine. I think we got a stout piece. I know you may be thinking to yourself, Matt, I thought your junkyard days were over. Yeah, well, I thought so too. But sometimes you gotta throw on the old school OG original hoodie and get back to what you know. Trust me, we're still gonna have a lot of fun with this. I have never swapped LS cam bearings before, but how hard could it be? Well, apparently pretty hard. <laughs> so I got about a half a clue as what's going on here. And this is not the tool that I looked up how to use. We gotta go to Lugal. How to use a cam bearing tool that has no instructions. Good thing we got YouTube. Look at it, Justin Miller. 118,000 steps views. All right, so we slide the adapter on. That's what I did. Who designed this? All right, so we were like halfway there. We gotta do all the shit I just did. We gotta have a wrench for this side to expand it. This makes no sense, but we'll try it. We'll try anything three times. All right, so we do that. And we gotta have a wrench on this. Okay, so we twist it till it expands, I guess. And then we smack the shit out of it in the head. Who needs a machine shop? Boy, let me tell you what. We're gonna be putting all kinds of badass motors together in this garage. Look at that. Beautiful cam bearing, release. Look at that. <sighs> Professional. Oh. Hey, but for real, if you guys have never done this before, unlike that video we just watched, I'm gonna show you something that I did pick up somewhere else, right? Now, I've done this one, this one, this one. So you would think I would just go right here, right? Well, now, for this one, we're gonna come in through this side. The reason we wanna do that is because the more of this tool that we have inside of the block, and the more we see how this tool is inside the block and then we can line it up with the cone, if you try hitting it from the end, for example, like if I tried hitting it here, I could really easily turn that wonky everything and it's it's gonna be really important when we put it back in but that's why we want to go through this side go through the opposite side so that way we've got some control over the tool and we know it's gonna be mostly straight profession now look at that man I'm, see I try to tell my kids like my kids like watching YouTube and stuff and they just don't understand we got the world at our fingertips you could learn anything in the world you want to learn and instead you watch some random Lauren Z side chick reacting to videos. Not that I'm hating on Lauren Z side. I'm just saying, like, you could be learning things, like how to replace cam bearings in an LS so you don't have to rely on somebody else to do it for you. Now, a lot of people are gonna be like, well, you shouldn't touch the cam bearings. Well, you know what? I shouldn't be going through motors left and right either, but here I am, and I'm tired of it. So we're gonna swap out some cam bearings. Also, my dude Tim sent me brand new bearings for a motor. So you're dang right, we're gonna use them. Go baby, go! Man, 
Look at that. We got cam bearings. Now, I'm gonna do my best to clean this out, and then I'll show you putting the new cam bearings in, which there's also some important information that only the professionals know that I guess I can share with you guys. All right, we got two super important things about these cam bearings. If you notice, there's multiple part numbers on the cam bearing. It'll show you usually on the side of the box or inside the box. Uh, like this is B336, 337, 338, 337, 336, right? So the cam bearings go in a certain order. There's two outside ones, there's two of these, and there's one middle one. Also, now's a really good time to check your oil orifices. So this is a 336, let's make sure this is a 336 yep b336 b336 triple check don't screw this up now's not the time first time ever putting cam bearings in i would hate to screw this up but right there's two holes one of them your oil is going to come out of so you got to be able to have them lined up where the oil comes out of what i find a little weird and i may call and ask somebody on is that this oil galley here is really large so we could put it in like 10 different positions and it would still technically put oil so i'm wondering if we should put it at the end should have paid attention to how they were in there to begin with oh no <laughs> did you did did I just slide that in? Yeah. Is that gonna be a good cam bearing uh, for that? Looks, that looks great, just spinning around in a circle again for us there. Yep. There's two different cam bearing styles for an LS. 50-50 shot. What do you think we landed? On the wrong side of that. On the wrong side of 50-50. We were making significant progress. This was going amazingly. I was gonna replace cam bearings for the first time ever in my life. That's what I forget for wanting to replace the cam bearings, especially ones that look decent. Here we are. We're not getting cam bearings till at least Tuesday. Oh, every time. Words of wisdom for your boy Matt Rice. Don't be like me. Don't try to do things correctly. Should have just shoved the cam in there, throw it all back together, and sent her on home. But I desire greatness and an engine that runs all season long. Will we get it? Find out when we return. If I've managed to track down cam bearings, proper cam bearings, and install them in our 7,000 horsepower engine. Damn, Matt! Back at it again with the cam bearings. Yes, my man Bill, shout out to my man Bill, had two sets of cam bearings on the shelf. He said, bring them both home, figure out which ones fit, whichever ones don't fit, Get him back to me. Sounds good. So, we're gonna start with the CH10. So, but 10-1 but is position 1-5. 10-1. Let's see if this is the winner. 10-1. Not the winner. I'm gonna tell you guys right now, if this other set of cam bearings don't fit, I'm gonna take up snowmobile racing, because it's gotta be way easier than this. It's gotta be. It's just snowmobiles, right? I don't know nothing about snowmobiles, but... Ba -ba -ba -ba. 23 1 is 10 5. So let's see. We got 23 1. Oh, oh, that looks like I could force it in there. Woo! That's going to be a tight fit. Okay, so that's that. 10 1 is going to be 2 4. So let's see. 10 1. Yep, that don't want to go in either. So that'll be a tight fit. And 10 3 will be position 3. Yep, we don't have to send all these bad boys home. So. What it ended up being, for this particular setup, CH23, which is like a super common standard thing. I think we got the right cam bearings. Let's get them in. The key here is, I don't know if you can see it in the camera. See, this is where the oil comes out of, right in this hole right here in the side. So what you have to do is you gotta take one of these holes and line it up with that hole and you'll provide proper oil to your cam. Now, this is just a wild thought because I was looking at it earlier, trying to get this all figured out for lining it up. It would, I wonder what the case would be. I'm sure there's some professional engine builders that for some strange reason, enjoy watching my channel. But what would it be like, there's only one hole, what would it be like if we matched, since these cam bearings have two holes and we drilled out, does the oil go all the way around? Could we drill that other side out? I don't know, I'm not gonna try it. We're not gonna be the test dummy because this is like a decent motor. But you know what? I probably, if I can get the other one apart, maybe we could drill it out and see. I don't know what effect that would have, if it would be better boiling, more pressure, less pressure, how that would work. But we got a set of cam bearings. It's time to get them in. How are you? 
just one more tap. No stress. No stress. I've committed all of the sins. Not only did I look at the cam bearings, I went ahead and replaced them. Now, since we've got that done, we're gonna have to do a little bit of cleaning throughout because, you know, there's some lube, there's some grease, there's some this and that and the other, but not a bad time to start putting our main bearings in. We can put our mains in. Once the mains are in, then we can put the crank back in and clean that up. We can put the mains all the way in and then we can put the rods in. And we got new rod bearings too. We got new bearings for everything. Everybody. It's a party over here. It's a party. It's a it's a new bearing party. The only thing I don't like is that like these here from the factory, you see they got a little slot in them. Little little thing there. Yeah, these new ones don't have it. But we'll just do what we do. Oh, I think we're gonna need this is like a rubber mallet job. This is not a regular hammer job, this is more a rubber mallet job. Now I know there's gonna be some expert engine builders and engine shops that after they see my fine touches with the rubber mallet, they're gonna be like, man, we need to hire this guy. This guy is our next star engine builder. Unfortunately, unfortunately, I'm not available for that. I work solely at DNR Auto Machine Shop. What's our slogan? We may not be the best, but we'll do our best. <sighs> this is looking pretty good. Couple more, and he's, he's got it on. God, you know what time it is? It's time to lay this crank up in here. We about to be cranking. Whoo, baby. So if we want to lay the crank up in here, we got to put the luby lube on it. Grave the crank, the old landlord special, the old wiper down and sender. That looks like it fits nice and good in there. We use plenty of assembly lube. So she's astro gliding right now. Ain't mad at it. Time to do the other side of the main caps. Get them bearings in and we'll retorque this thing down. Remember that time where they were stamped with the numbers but your boy even marked which direction they go in so I wouldn't screw this up? Yeah, that's that preparedness there. Get this bearing out. She's out. Which direction does it go? Oh, it goes like that. Now, I'm gonna hold off on tightening these down. I might just start a couple threads or something because I'm pretty sure there is a sequence in which you're supposed to, like I don't think you're supposed to just go back to front tightening it down. You gotta tighten it down in order. So. I'm gonna get them all bearing swap down started and then Google the tightening sequence because Google has the answers. It's amazing. It's like 2023 and people still every day on Facebook like, how do I do this? Have you tried Google? Have you met my friend Google? Google knows all. There's a lot of people that have built a whole career off of just Googling shit. Ooh, it's, bro, like so much. Well, I'm not gonna say that. I will say a lot of what I've learned has been through Google, YouTube as well. But then also just straight up watching other people. Watch and reproduce. Watch what they do, figure it out, do it yourself, you know, change it, apply it to yourself. Don't just straight up copy what it is. I mean, but then again, it's still, there's stuff about film editing and all that kind of stuff. You just gotta straight up copy and, and get it, you know what I mean? Figure out how to do it. Well, I want you guys to know, and this is really important, right? Are we doing everything 110% correct? Do I have the knowledge and years of experience? Blah, 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 no. But we're never going to learn unless we do it. I could spend all my time waiting around for somebody else to do it, money, everything else, stuff I don't got, or I can figure out how to do it. And maybe this will be the best motor I ever put together, maybe not. 
But in five years from now, I can tell you the motors are going to be real nice. Hand tight, we're gliding, I ain't mad at it. Just so you know, these bolts that go in the side of the mains are reusable, but they were at one point dropped, but they were sealed. You gotta put a little bit of gasket maker on there just to make sure no oil seeps out the side there, but can be reused. Also, main bolts can be reused. And I know you're gonna yell at me, I'm gonna reuse the rod bolts too. Yes, they are torqued to yield, but they can be torqued up to three times to check bearing clearance. And I can guarantee you they weren't checking no bearing clearance in the factory, which tells me I've got at least two more times to retorque them. We'll be all right. So take it for what it's worth because I found these instructions on Lugal just like you can too. You go inside, in sequence, then outside, in sequence, 15 foot pounds, then come to the side, 18 foot pounds, final torque, come back through 80 degrees. I will say that's the nice part about having one of these super fancy uh, torque wrenches. It will do the degrees for me, so all I gotta do is go back through in sequence. Also, we set the thrust bearing. If you guys saw, I was hitting it back and forth. That should be fully seated. Everything should be good to get out. Ugh, man, I, fuck, I suck at this. The thrust bearing's in the middle. You gotta smack it back and forth and shit and to make sure it's fully seated. But ours is fully seated. I smacked it with a hammer. There were two options. Smack it with a hammer or pry with a pry bar. I like smacking it with a hammer better. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. It's time to, hold on, let me make sure I got the hip, the hole facing the right direction. We're going to take these wonderfully used Gen 4 rods and pistons, put some new bearings in them, and smack them in this thing. Let me grab a couple of bearings. Now I would love to have this all super nice and professionally done and everything. A DNR machining, this right here is what we call a good old bearing slap where you just slap some bearings in there and hope everything works out. These really don't look too bad either. Put a little assembly luber on her just to keep it G. And then, remember which way it goes together. These are broken, so they only go one way, which is that way. I'm gonna pop this sucker in. I was gonna try to use the power tool because I lost my little thing that went on that. That ain't gonna work. Bam, she's in there. Man, that's smooth. All right, so we got one, we need three. Now I'm just giving this a light cleaning here, not worrying too much about it because I know once we start putting the ethanol through it, ethanol is going to clean it right up. But what I don't want is big chunks of stuff that are going to come flying off. So nice little cleaning. Happy birthday, Dada! Thank you, Nico. Have a hug. Have a birthday hug. Thank you. Ready to go in with our Texas Speed K1 
cam schmaft. A lot of people in the video has been asking stuff like, oh, what cam is this, what cam is that? Thought I told everybody, but this one here, let's see what we got here. I just wanna clean this off a little bit before we lube her up and send her on home. This one here is the old Texas Speed Magic Stick. It's gonna be magical. You guys are gonna love it. You guys are gonna love it. It's magical. So, get some assembly lube on there. Nice, good amount because we got these brand new cam bearings. Get them on there real nice. Spread it out, look at that. Yeah. And then this way we can put the lifters in and they're not gonna fall in the block. I'll tell you what, buddy. Brand new cam bearings are a nice snug fit. Wouldn't you know? more three a foot as i was checking everything out we assembled the short block i got the timing set uh, i was just spinning everything over i just wanted to make sure our cam was in the right position right in the center of the roller and out of the corner of my eye wouldn't you know i noticed something we have got a tiny little crack in this lifter now, these were a set of LS7 lifters that were very barely used, but I can tell you that is probably going to cause us a problem in the future. And trust me, I got 99 problems, this lifter is one of them, my engines are probably 87 of the other problems, and I'm trying not to have these problems again. Now I got to make a decision if we're going to go with the factory lifters or see if somebody has a set of lifters available because I just don't feel comfortable using those and I don't want to mix and match and everything either. Every day is new trials and tribulations, but we rise above. Well, we had a little bit of luck today. Now that I've torqued down all these connecting rods, I was able to find another set of lifters. So it's actually the same set of lifters I had, but brand new, which means now we've got a brand new set of lifters and a few spares. <sighs> Let's drop those in. I was thinking about something on them heads, brand new. We got them 243 heads, right? But you know, we got that other thing. Mm -hmm. The other thing. The other thing. Yeah, the other thing. So I'm wondering, I'm thinking maybe we just take them 5-3 heads that already got the springs on them and we put them on this because we might we might have to do some other things. Some other things. Some other things. That's what I'm thinking. Let's get some lifters in here. Brand new. Hopefully they go right in. There we go, a little slide action in there. Ooh. Perfect. Like a glove. They already got a little lube on them. Lube is gonna be important in this because as I've been putting this engine together and turning it over, don't get me wrong, it turns over very smooth, it's beautiful, it's nice. Uh, but it's a little tighter than what I normally feel when I'm doing these junkyard LSs, but it's also got brand new bearings. So I'm gonna have to set up this little oiling system trick where you use the pressure sprayer and then you go on the side of the block and everything. We're gonna have to, we're gonna have to figure that out and set that up before we put this motor in anything because we want to have it good oil pressure. We don't want to ruin these bearings we just put in. Oh yeah, but these things like a glove, baby. Like a glove. Brand new set of lifters never hurt anyone.
Well, as you guys may have just seen, we just learned ourselves a valuable lesson. What that lesson is, when you think you got all the parts, you might not. Now, it's not that big of a deal. We've got the wrong head studs. I was making the assumption being a Gen 3 block would take Gen 3 head studs, but it's one of those mid-year things with the Gen 4 internals and still has the Gen 3 cam position sensor located here in the rear instead of the timing cover, but it's gonna require Gen 4 head studs. I should have known as soon as I put this one in and I was like, oh, I need a short one. I know better than that. I've done this too many times, but the problem is I don't know that we're gonna get a set of Gen 4 head studs right around the corner like we have with all the other parts that we've been lucky to get. I mean, we might. You guys have been, I'm telling you, I've been seeing the comments, everything. I know everybody wants videos. They wanna see what's going on. They wanna know everything else. I'm trying, guys, I'm trying. We've been having these little hangups that you know have taken this simple engine assembly and turned it into a learning experience for me. Also for you guys, so you guys don't make the same mistake, but I'm not gonna order a set of Gen 4 head studs, wait a week for them to come in, and wait another week for you guys to have a video. So we're probably gonna end it here. Look, I've given you all a lot of information. <sighs> There's still more information I've yet to give. I'm not gonna let this stop us. These are minor hiccups, just minor parts holds up, hold ups, and even though we've had a few of them and everything else, and it's been frustrating, um, yeah, your boy's just, I'm just gonna go snowmobile racing. So, like, that's gonna be the big announcement of this video, is that we're selling all the cars, we're selling all the engines, we're selling everything, fire sale, everything's on sale, we're going snowmobile racing. It's the only thing we can do in January anyway. Let's just go for it. I think that sounds like a much better idea. It's all right, though, because once this thing that's fighting us a little bit goes all the way together, it is going to be a nice little piece. I'm really looking forward to it. There's a couple more things. I, you know, I can put the oil pump on. Um, I can put the valley cover on. I can clean out the oil pan, put that on. We can't do nothing with heads yet, which is unfortunate because I really, as much as I've really been wanting to and trying to get a motor together, I've never even told you guys where this motor's going, but I wanted to get a motor together maybe possibly in the Nova, start testing. We've got some races we're locked into, like February 11th. So I'm trying to make an effort to get there, but it just is what it is, you know? I could put it together with factory reused head bolts, but why do that? Why would I go through all the trouble of putting brand new cam bearings in this thing? Everything else I've been doing, just to reuse factory head bolts. Look guys, I'm not gonna BS you. This is why we haven't been putting out videos lately. Number one, we've been doing a ton of work in the background to make our season successful, and it's shaping up to probably be, we're having the opportunity to have one of the greatest seasons we've ever had. But we're also running the little stuff like this, and I just don't think it makes for very quality content. Now, we're still gonna put this video out because you guys have been asking, where's the videos, where's the videos, where's the videos? We're gonna hook you up. I promise, if you stay patient with me, we're really, really working on some pretty cool stuff. And, you know, I, I can't just jump all out and say everything because I'm not one to count their chickens, you know, the eggs before they hatch. Uh, some stuff's already been paid for. Some stuff's been deposits put on. Some stuff is still up in the air. You guys are going to want to see it. But for now, I'm going to cover this thing up, enjoy the rest of my birthday with my family, and I will see you guys next time. Where hopefully... We have all the parts we need. We can get it in the Nova running. We finally got all the back ordered body parts for the C10. So I was like, maybe if we can get the Nova running. We can get it to drive out of here. We can move it out of the way, drive the C10 in, start working on some stuff there if we wanted to have some fun with it. But it's just not working our way just yet. Look guys, you're gonna have days like this. You're gonna have times like this. Just gotta persevere and push through. I'll see you guys next time. Don't make the same mistakes I do. I'm a valuable asset for you. I'm a valuable asset because I tell you exactly how not to screw things up the way that I've screwed them up. Brandon, find me a snowmobile.